going to uh, go into, you're going to sign, by the way, you're going to sign your service agreements uh, um, during a recess. Um, we were supposed to sign them when you came up, but it's okay. Um, uh, so you are going to sign your service agreements uh, during a recess. Um, not a problem, but they will be signed today. Um, did I, does everyone have a copy of their Youth Council handbook? Okay. Uh, clerks, can we just get those out to, or facilitators, sorry, can we get those out to, uh, the, just raise your hand if you don't yet have one and we'll uh, get one to you. Um, so this portion, uh, uh, we have a, a special guest speaking at 11. Um, so this portion will uh, take the next 50 minutes and we're just going to go through the orientation uh, process. We're going to highlight some of the uh, key, um, uh, we're going to highlight some of the, the, the key points in the handbook. We will not be going page by page, um, but at the bottom uh, you will uh, notice the page numbers, so we will uh, we will start at page seven. Into elect your chair, uh, your vice chair, and your and your, your committee chairs and vice chairs. Um, that'll all happen this afternoon. Um, right after we elect the chair, uh, we will take a brief recess uh, because the press will will be returning uh, for uh, uh, for a press conference uh, with with the chair and with the members of, of council that are here. So about the City of Council of Toronto, and again, I'm not going to read word for word, I'm just going to go and highlight. Um, so the City of Council of Toronto is a, is a chapter, it's the first chapter, but it's a chapter of um, a, a not-for-profit uh, federally registered organization called the City Youth Councils of Canada. And um, the reason I say it's the first chapter and the reason we've incorporated federally is because we do plan on uh, launching uh, democratically elected youth councils uh, all across Canada and starting January we've already been recruited by the Durham Region Council to, uh, to start a, an elected youth council there and so they will have their elections next October uh, just, just as you had yours. Um, the, the, uh, it's governed by a board of directors. The board of directors, um, and I'll just get them to stand, so I'm, I'm uh, on the board of directors. We have Mac Morrow, who stepped out, uh, but you, you've heard from him, and we also have Frank Cormier at the end there, and he's also part of the board. Um, it is then managed, uh, the day-to-day -day operations and the finances, uh, uh, we have hired, a, a, a outsourced a company uh, called Novus United, um, and uh, again, federal company, and they, uh, they manage the day-to-day -day finances. Um, and so when you receive your budget, whenever that is, um, uh, we hope shortly, but uh, when you do receive uh, uh, um, your budget, and we do have some committed funds already uh, that are, are going to come in, so if you're sitting on the budget committee, you're going to be given all those details, and the budget committee will report back to the Youth Council. When the Youth Council is given their budget, um, it will probably start around $12,000. Um, you guys will have full control over um, how that's spent, and you will debate it in, uh, in committee first, and then you'll debate it here on the Youth Council floor, and once that's approved, then you've approved your budget. Um, over time, as we continue to build our constituencies, uh, and as we continue to have more and more youth engaged in our process, more and more sponsors will want to come on board. Uh, and so it's in our best interest to do our jobs properly, right? Our values, and I just want to highlight our four values because they are pretty important, um, and these are just uh, uh, four key values. Um, they're not obviously the only values that we have, but the four key values, accountability. We are accountable uh, to our constituents. Um, some of you, yes, you may have been acclaimed, but that doesn't absolve you of your responsibility uh, or your accountability to the youth who live in your ward. Integrity. We operate on a basis of integrity. Everything that we need to do in the Youth Council, everything that the administration does, all needs to be held uh, with utmost integrity. Respect, obviously. We ask that everyone respects everyone, uh, everyone's opinion. We ask that you respect everyone's religion, um, everyone's race, everyone's culture, um, everyone's beliefs, um, everyone's sexual orientation. Uh, this is a, a, a space that we want everyone to feel safe in and, uh, and respect accomplishes that. Please, uh, during your term, try not to speak over each other and, and if you do, the chair will step in. 
um, as that's their job. But please be respectful, and, and you know, let's let's not turn this into a, um, a model council where we're yelling at each other. We can we can do things in a respectful and peaceful manner, um, and we will differ on opinion, and that's what the votes are there for, and that's what uh, and that's what negotiations are there for. Um, and I'm I'm absolutely positive that you can do it. All of you have great potential and passion, and I've seen that on on the Facebook group so far. Um, and I'm interested to see uh, uh, where you where you take it from here. And of course, transparency. Everything that we do as an organization needs to be transparent. All of the votes, for example, uh, that we take, all of the budget items, all of where the budget is spent and how it's spent, that's all going to be published onto our website uh, for the public to see um, so that we are accountable, uh, again, going back to the accountability. Um, but it's also so that, again, we're transparent as an organization and, uh, and uh, are fulfilling our, uh, uh, that, that value. <coughs> Uh, note the team directory on page eight and nine. So the important things to note are just, you know, at your own time, take a note of what each team is responsible for. We do have teams that are able to help you uh, with your roles as youth counselors. So some of you are great with your websites and you've already got them started. Some of you uh, might not even know where to begin. Um, you can seek help from, from our team. Uh, if you need help in reaching out to the media, we have all the media contacts uh, with us. So we can help you in reaching out to the media and, and scheduling press conferences and anything that you may want to do um, either as a United Council or as an individual youth counselor in your ward. If you're having events in your ward, please let our, our teams know so that uh, our media team and our, our public affairs team even so that they can publicize that um, not only to the city councillors but also to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, through Twitter and through Facebook uh, and help you garner more support in your wards. Um, actually, on the, the uh, team directory note, I just want to um, highlight that um, we have two separate teams within the CYCTO. Um, so the first big team is Youth Council Services. They are responsible for all the legislative proceedings, um, and uh, you know, such as these Youth Council meetings and, and the minutes and the agendas and the minutes and agendas for your committees. Um, and uh, so, you know, Asquith, as the Youth Council clerk, is is the manager of all of his facilitation team, and and they will probably grow in size. Um, and they're in charge of this floor. So if you're not in dress code and they say that you can't come in, if I'm not in dress code and they say that I can't come in, I can't come in. Um, this is their floor. It's, it's ultimately your floor, but they're here to, uh, to, to help with the, thank you. They're here to help with the, um, uh, uh, just in, ensure that there's decorum and, and uh, that we're um, respecting our policies and procedures. Then there's the Youth Council Directory on page 10 and 11. Um, and so those are just all your fellow youth counselors and, and um, uh, you have their individual email addresses there. Um, some of the names under Youth Ambassadors say that it's to be determined. Um, so we will be uh, publishing those to you as soon as those uh, organizations get the names. Um, uh, and some of the organizations have gotten us the names in the, in the um, recent day. Uh, and unfortunately everything was printed by then. So I apologize to those organizations again. Um, an important thing to note about the Youth Council is that you guys can actually communicate um, with all of you without typing in every single email address. Um, the, uh, your, your email, uh, the email for the team, or for, for all of you, is youthcouncil at cycto.ca. If you email that, it'll automatically email out to every youth counselor. If you email... Um, no, sorry, you don't have access to that. But if you, <laughs> if you emailed, uh, for example, the administration, we might email uh, executive assistants at CYCTO, and that'll email all of your executive assistants. And why we use that is, is just because we, uh, we might want to communicate important messages. We will always uh, uh, CC the youth counselor when we're sending out correspondence, um, but we might want uh, some of your EAs to know specific things that are, are specific to their duties. Um, but again, we'll always CC youth, counsel youth counselors. The final thing that I want to note while we're on the Youth Council directory, and I think Asquith may have mentioned it, is that um, there are um, some vacant wards. I believe there's eight. Uh, we will be having a by-election. I can't tell you when that by-election is because you will tell me when that by-election is. You are now the elected Youth Council. The staff can't act officially uh, on anything without the Youth Council or the Chair's approval, um, and, and, and so I, I just want to note that as well. The second piece of the, of the administration uh, 
so we've gone over the legislative. The second piece is the administrative, the operational. Um, and that's us who sit up front here on either side. Uh, and we're here to present you with reports uh, if you ask them. Uh, oops, sorry. That's, yeah. If it's media, just answer it. Um, we're here to present you with reports. We have a research team. Um, they're responsible for doing some research. We want your job to be focused on advocacy and actually getting some work done for the youth in your communities. We don't want you to focus on, you know, if, if you're a high school president, for example, sometimes you have to do the agenda for your minutes. Uh, sorry, for your, for your minutes, for your meetings. We don't want you to have to worry about that administrative details. We will worry about that. We want you to worry about um, the the um, advocacy efforts of your community and, and advocating effectively on behalf of your community and your youth constituents. Okay. Um, which brings me actually into the next page, so 12 and 13. Um, so the role and function of the youth counselor, and I think you pretty much know what they are, but I'm just going to quickly go over them. And, and that's, number one, is to be active in your communities, attend events. Don't feel, feel bashful about um, really putting your title out there. You are a, a youth counselor for the City Youth Council of Toronto. You meet here in council chambers once a month, and you do advocate on behalf of uh, uh, your youth uh, constituents. And your reports go to City Council. So you are important and you need to really reach out into your communities and make sure that youth um, know who you are and that they can reach you and how they can reach you um, so that, again, you're accessible um, and, and that uh, they know what avenues to go, f uh, to go towards if, if they need to speak to somebody about an issue that they have or, or an idea that they might have for the city to make the city a better place. Attend monthly youth council meetings. There are eight hours in these council chambers, so today is your first one, as you know. Um, and your, your next one is in November. Again, all of those dates are going to be set by you because you are the youth council. You decide uh, what you do and when. Um, that will be done today. The executive committee will be meeting in committee room one uh, right after the community councils meet and elect their chair and vice chair. And you're going to receive more details about that after lunch as well. But I just want to give you a heads up. If you're running for a committee chair or vice chair, you will be, uh, you will be in a meeting um, uh, this afternoon uh, to decide on who the committee members are, as well as what the 2013 schedule is. Schedule of meetings. Participate in three committees. So if you're a chair or vice chair, you, don't, you only participate in um, your community committee, the committee that you chair or vice chair, as well as the executive uh, committee. If you are, um, uh, uh, if you've opted out of running for chair or vice chair positions, then uh, you, are, you need to be a member of three committees. One executive, which is an internal based committee, so there's either budget or governance and operations. Um, and for those of you who don't know, governance and operations deals with all of the, the administrative piece, um, as well as the elections, um, preparing for the next elections, preparing for by-elections, things like that. Okay. Um, and the, the community, uh, sorry, the, the committee meetings are really only two to three hours um, once a month. Um, they're, they're, they're small because you're just you're in a smaller group. You have less motions uh, being brought forward. Um, and, uh, but if the chair and, and the members opt to have longer meetings, that's totally up to you guys. Um, we just set the parameter of two to three hours because you can get a sizable amount done in, in that time frame. Recruit and manage a team of assistants. So I've no, I, I know I've been uh, really hard on this during the uh, uh, during the the onboarding process on on Facebook and through email. Your assistants are not there in title. Your assistants are there to help you and be your team in your community. It's going to be very hard to reach out to. Uh, some of you have upward of five to six thousand youth who you represent, and it's important that. Um, you have that strong team behind you who can help you with your website, can help you create videos, can help you in um, saying, hey, I have a friend at this organization, so I can get you in on their agenda. Um, things like that. Use your, build your networks, use those networks, and, uh, and, and get the word out and, and really, again, effectively represent your communities. And then, of course, um, meet regularly with your city councillor and then shadow them at least once annually. So our public affairs team has arranged with every councillor that uh, um, uh, that you will shadow um, uh, shadow them for one day, an entire day out of the entire uh, out of the year. Some city councillors have already let us know, informed us that they would like you to shadow them more often. So that's completely up to you. If you have the time uh, and and the schedule of the shadowing is totally between you and them. Um, 
when you meet your city councillor, obviously you'll go through those details. You'll probably email back and forth about some of those dates. But again, that's that's what uh, that's what that entails. And meeting with them quarterly. So again, some city councillors have indicated that they would like to meet with their youth councillor monthly uh, or biweekly. Um, again, that's totally between you and, and your your councillor. And I know some of you already have relationships with your councillors, and that's great because that's what we need. Um, just make sure though that you're you have an opportunity to talk about your your issues and talk about what's happening in your community from the youth perspective because um, that's what you're there to help them bring is the youth perspective for the organizations um, please um, you know go back to your organizations after every youth council meeting report on what's been happening here uh, if you have any issues in your organizations that are city related please bring them to the youth council that's what you're here for is to liaise and be ambassadors between uh, your organization and the city youth council of Toronto and the reason we have 16 youth ambassadors is because there is a gap. There, you know, there's the geographical representation, but there's also the organizational representation. So we have organizations, um, uh, well, they're all listed, but like United Way, um, like, uh, well, York, for example, 50,000 students, correct? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a lot. And yes, a lot of them probably live in many of your wards, but um, York as a university or um, uh, U of T Scarborough will have very, um, uh, very unique issues that don't only meet the geographic need. I know uh, U of T Scarborough might have transit issues, right? Because transit is a huge issue in Scarborough. Um, and so they feel free to bring that to, uh, to the youth council table and to your committees. Um, as, I, as I alluded on before, we have a, a great working relationship with the mayor's office, with the city, all city councillor offices. You'll be happy to know that city councillors have actually been emailing me and phoning me in the last two days asking who their youth counselor is that was elected and how do they contact you. So we've given out your email and we and if you have set up your, your phone number then we've, we've given them your, your youth council phone number. Um, and for members of the audience, just so you know, we provide, uh, for safety and security reasons, because we're, we are youth here, um, we are uh, safeguarding that by ensuring that uh, youth counselors do not have to give away their personal email or personal phone numbers. Um, and so we provide them with an email address and a phone number that integrates as part of their uh, website package. Um, uh, constituent management system is what we call it. We have a, 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 a we've begun, I won't say we have a, a strong working relationship with the clerk's office yet because it's going to take time to build that. The clerk's office is in charge of a great deal legally at the city of Toronto here. Um, and so for them to use, for, for us to, uh, for them to let us use their table, as an example, it sounds very trivial, but if, if we were to spill anything or if we were to damage anything, it would affect the next council meeting. So it's very serious and they've entrusted us with that. And so we do have a, a, a good working relationship and we're continually building that. Um, and we hope to build that to the point where uh, you can begin using some of the equipment that we have, such as the voting um, system. Uh, facilities management, so if you ever want to book any, and uh, um, I'm on page 14 now, if you ever want to book any of the civic centers or, or any committee rooms here in City Hall, you can do so through uh, our admin team. Uh, we have free access to all City Hall, uh, City facilities um, that are civic centers and, uh, and then of course City Hall and Metro Hall. Um, so let us know if you have an event or if you have a meeting that you'd like uh, that you'd like in there. Just let us know, and we'll uh, we'll schedule it under the City Youth Council of Toronto name. The AV team has uh, 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 the AV uh, department has provided us with great support. Um, they're they're operating our, our cameras uh, on the uh, well on Saturdays, and uh, they'll they'll be here um, once a month. Hopefully, they're available all of our meetings. Um, and, uh, and they're also providing us with uh, DVD uh, at the end so that we can upload all of that, um, all of that information. Um, uh, uh, orientation session. Wow, orientation session. Where was I speaking? Uh, yes, AV. Uh, so they're providing us with a DVD. So if you've ever said anything in a youth council meeting that you'd like to put on your website as a segment, let us let our um, let Sandy know. He's our manager of uh, creative communications, and he will cut it up for you and send it send the uh, chunk to you so that you can upload anything uh, to your uh, youth council website or your Facebook page or anything that you want. Okay. Um, 
the leadership composition and authority. So we're now going to go into some of the governance and decision making. So the chair of the youth council meetings um, is obviously responsible for chairing the meetings. They're also responsible for chairing uh, the executive committee, um, which is the committee of chairs and vice chairs. Um, they're an ex officio member of all committees, so they don't vote on any of the other committees, but they, they can attend and speak and, and ask questions, and actually any youth councillor is able to do that. They are the official spokesperson of the City Youth Council of Toronto. Um, so as I said on, on, uh, on Facebook, um, on, uh, on Monday morning, uh, whoever the chair is will be coming with me at 6 a.m. Uh, or 4 or 6 a.m. to uh, CBC Metro Morning, and, uh, and, and they've asked to interview us uh, uh, live. Um, their response, the chair and the vice chair, what distinguishes them is the fact that um, the chair is responsible for internal relations. So anything having to do with the, the structure or um, uh, liaising with, with um, the admin teams. And the, the vice chair is responsible for external relations, so intergovernmental. So for example, um, many of you know about the TDSB Super Council. They have two representatives here. Um, Wow, we forgot to call you up during induction. I apologize. Um, we have so we have two members from the TDSB Super Council who represents the uh, all of the students within the, the within the Toronto District School Board, um, and uh, and um, so you might want to go through them on some things. But the vice chair um, can also speak to their president directly, uh, and that's what the vice chair's role is. Just as an example of intergovernmental relations. Um, and then again, anything else that you would consider internal or external. Um, the committee chairs and, and committee vice chairs are really just responsible for managing their committee. There's, there's um, no overboard of, of responsibility. Um, there's no organizational responsibility. You chair your committee, you help uh, uh, decide the agenda items and, and things like, or the order of the agenda, sorry. Um, and uh, um, you, know, you, work, you work that way. I'm not going to go through the committee mandates because uh, most of you do know what they are by now. Um, but just for members of the public, we have the exact same uh, 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 committee structure as the City of Toronto does, uh, with a few minor uh, changes, obviously. Um, so uh, we have an executive committee, which is made up of all the chairs and vice chairs of the, of the um, committees. We have the budget committee, as well as the governance and operations committee. Then we have six standing committees. So we look after affordable housing, arts and culture, community development and recreation, Economic development, which deals with issues of you know, youth unemployment and, and other economic issues uh, that face youth. Uh, parks and environment and uh, public transportation. Um, so those, those cover the areas fairly uh, uh, broadly. Um, the Youth Council may decide that during your term that you want to add another standing committee. That's completely up to you. Um, you, just, you would have to go through the proper procedures of changing the charter, uh, which is in, in your power. An important note that I want to mention is now how to read official documents. So has anybody, um, how many of you uh, have read a city, uh, uh, city council um, agenda before? Okay, so a few of you, but not many of you. Um, so if you turn to page 17 and 18, um, that explains everything having to do with how to read our agendas and minutes. So you have agendas in front of you for today's meeting. Um, yes, it's all very presentation and information related, uh, not action related. Action related will come in the afternoon, trust me. Um, and so uh, you have uh, various definitions there as to what, is, what, is, what does action mean, what does deferred mean, what does referred mean. All of that is there for, for you to look at. You'll get to know it very well during your term. Um, Agenda items can be presented at youth council meetings, providing that you have, uh, uh, um, you have the support to add that to the agenda, um, if the agenda was already approved. And again, the, the clerk and the chair will um, make sure that we're, we're following the, the rules properly. Um, submitting agenda items. Every youth councillor has an opportunity to submit agenda items. Uh, in the charter, it does state that you need two people in order to submit an agenda item. It's just a first and a seconder, or a motioner and a seconder. So before you bring a, an item to the table, um, just make sure that you have one of your fellow youth counselors uh, uh, agree to be the seconder of that motion. Um, but all of you can bring motions to the table. Yes, at some point, you might have 100 items on your youth council agenda to get through in eight hours. Don't be alarmed, because Council has thousands of items on their agenda. 
but what they do is they do an agenda clearing. And so that's what you're going to do as well, is you're going to do an agenda clearing. And so at the beginning of every meeting, uh, the, the, the chair will be here and, and will go through chunks of, of agenda items. So they'll say, they'll read out and they'll say, does anybody want to hold any items between 1 and 10? So you'd look at your agendas, you'd go, nope, I have nothing that I want to hold or discuss or debate, I'm ready to approve it. And if it's the consent of the youth council that one, uh, one item out of those 10 be held, then it's held. Uh, sorry, if one youth councillor would like it held, then it's held. Um, but if all of you say, yeah, no, it's something that we all can agree with, then it's unanimously, unanimously approved uh, by consent. Okay, and so you don't actually have to go through that issue and debate it, and, and it definitely reduces your um, uh, reduces the number of uh, uh, of items that you're going to actually be debating. And city council does the same thing. Um, and what we see in the media and what we see in the news is all uh, strictly um, stuff that the the council needs to discuss. Um, and of course, it's the, the heated debates. But council uh, agrees on a lot of motions that go under the radar of, of media and the public because there's, there's really nothing contentious about them. They're, they might be fixing a pothole in someone's neighborhood. What, who, which counselor is going to stop that, right? Um, so uh, just, just to give you some examples. The voting system. So uh, voting system, you do not use the, 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 the voting system in front of you. You're going to be using, and Yanchu will hold them up, uh, you're going to be Yep, you're going to be using clickers, uh, and so those will be assigned to you at lunch today, and then you will receive them. Uh, the reason I say that they're going to be assigned to you is because um, we have to record the number on the back um, so that we know who is voting and how. Um, so for the leadership elections, that's not as necessary because the leadership elections are done completely uh, um, um, anonymously, but for uh, when you approve the 2013 uh, uh, schedule of meetings, for example, or in the future at, at your November Youth Council meeting, whenever you vote on any matter on the agenda, all of that is recorded and you'll see the votes up on the screen exactly how people voted after the vote has, has completed. Um, and then those votes will be published on the website for, uh, for your youth constituents and for the public to view. Same thing happens with City Council, um, and that's how we, that's how we maintain our, our key value of accountability and transparency. Um, reporting to Toronto City Council. So the big question that most people have on their mind is, um, how do our issues get from this floor to the Council floor? Um, it's a loaded question. So first of all, they don't actually go directly to Council floor, um, because we don't have that ability. But they do go to committee via report. So um, let's say the Public Transportation Committee of the Youth Council had met. They decided on an issue. They recommended that uh, a, a, a stance to the rest of the Youth Council. The Youth Council approved it. It would then go into a report that, again, the administration write uh, based on your vote and based on what you had said in your motion. And, uh, and that's presented to, uh, well, the Toronto Transit Commission in this case. If it's something having to do with bike lanes, it would go to the appropriate committee at the city. And so how we table those directly is actually through the chairs and, and vice chairs of those committees, and they sponsor them for us. So we don't actually have the ability to put anything on the council agenda. Um, that would be, uh, if that could happen, many external organizations would just put items on the, on the council agenda. So how we do that is, is we've established relationships uh, with, again, those councillors who are chairs and vice chairs of those committees, and they've, uh, many, well, most of them at this point, have agreed to, uh, to just sponsor uh, any of our reports that come forward. And so a member or uh, a member of your committee or a chair or a vice chair uh, of, of that specific committee that can speak to that issue, uh, anybody who can speak to that issue really, or if you presented a motion yourself, uh, you would be asked to go to that committee to explain, or at least create a video for that committee to explain if it's during the day and you're in school. So there's ways that we can work around it, but that's how your issues get onto the council agenda. Um, and so it's, it's quite exciting that, uh, that we have that ability. Um, Administrative support. So, as I said, you have assistants and, uh, and their roles are outlined and I think most of you have your assistants in place, which is great. You can have more than four if you want, but again, we're not here to just create titles. We're trying to, um, we're trying to create positions and, and give you the tools necessary so that you have a team behind you working in your, in your ward with you um, and beside you um, and that, that can support you and help you and get further support and, and further uh, your, your needs in the community. 
It's going to be a tough job on 14 and 24. Some committees, I will warn you already, um, have already 30 members of the public, uh, so 30 members who are not sitting here today on those committees. Now, we'll see once you know, November starts how many actually attend because they might have, you know, they, they might have accidentally signed up or they might have lost interest or, or become too busy. But um, as of now, we have some committees that have uh, up to 30 members. And so again, like encourage people, encourage people in your communities to register for those, uh, for those account, uh, for those. Um, and, and finally, of course, your website and uh, your CMS or constituent management system. Um, this website, um, once you fully understand its features, will benefit you amazingly, not only throughout your term, but also after your term, should you decide to uh, go for higher office. Um, there's all the regular features, but you can also create petitions. Um, you can create suggestion boxes where you can just leave suggestions and then people can vote on them and it's kind of crowdsourcing suggestions. Um, you can create surveys, um, you can recruit volunteers and it will automatically mark them as volunteers within your database. Anybody who phones uh, your youth council phone number will automatically be imported into your database and, uh, and if you already have their phone number on, on your, uh, in your database then it will just go under their, their current account, under their current file, and you'll be able to see all the times that they've called or contacted you or submitted a contact form on your website. And so that's why it's called the constituent management system is because it, it'll manage um, uh, uh, absolutely everything. Okay. Um, and that's it. So the, the, the final thing at the back, so just so you know, is a couple things. Um, so there's the uh, Youth Council Charter, and that, uh, as printed, is the finalized version. Um, uh, it, it, in order to uh, change the Youth Council Charter, um, it needs to be done through, um, uh, through uh, an amendment process. So amendments first go to the Governance and Operations Committee, and then the Governance and Operations Committee every September uh, table uh, it at the Youth Council all of the amendments that were proposed to the Youth Council, and uh, the Youth Council votes on them, and then they're they're brought into they're enacted or they're brought into force starting November. So you, you there's no changing them in between uh, Septembers, and the reason being is because we don't want rules constantly changing that people don't know what they are anymore, um, and and we want to just keep a very organized process that way. Um, so that's how you uh, would amend that. And the final thing in there is your brand atlas. And so that, um, again, goes over all of our colors, what our colors are exactly in terms of RGB, if you, if you understand what that means, red, green, blue, um, uh, um, and, and uh, the Pantone colors, et cetera, et cetera. It also goes through you know, words that you could use. Um, we ask everybody to stay away from uh, um, keywords such as calling it the Toronto Youth Council. Um, uh, because we're not the Toronto Youth Council, we're the City Youth Council of Toronto. It is a minor thing, but it is a big thing. Um, and, uh, and then uh, finally at the back is just, uh, we, we wanted to share the letter from the Toronto Youth Cabinet that, we received, that uh, all councillors uh, received and, and uh, that our administration received. Um, so that's for your viewing, uh, so that you understand kind of what our relationship is with them, um, and, uh, and you understand how, uh, how that relationship is progressing. Okay. Um, are there any questions before we wrap up? Awesome. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure you're going to have tons of questions once you go back to your... Yes? You can use your microphone. You have to press the button. It's okay. It's a learning process. <laughs> no, nope, you just have to click it on. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. And please remember to stand when you're addressing. I apologize. No problem. Um, I was just wondering uh, if we're going to get information about our websites and stuff like uh, later on. Uh, so how to access your specific yeah. website? Yeah. Yes, we'll be emailing that to anybody. Just email me if you don't have access yet and we'll, we'll get you access because everyone's website has been set up. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well again, I'll be around. So, uh, Councillor yes. Councillor Han. Okay. Uh, just a question, where should the assistance be right now? Uh, the assistance, I believe, should be here for now, but they will be going to uh, committee room one. Yes. 
Uh, sorry, when will the um, their workshop be done? Around. Uh, around 11.30 or 12. You're welcome. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So if, um, so if all of you counselor assistants that are in the room, if you can uh, proceed with uh, Michelle Weeks to uh, committee room one. Thank you, Tyler. So again, just to reiterate, all uh, council assistants are to proceed to committee room one for your uh, your session there. Um, it seems that our special guest is a little uh, tied up at the moment, so I think it is uh, in order for the council to stand in recess until 11:05. Give it a recess. Okay, and uh, during this recess, I'd like all uh, youth councils and ambassadors to uh, come up here to sign your service agreements. Thank you.